That ought to make one. <coughs> What's that, Des? Women's school teachers. The inner London education authorities just ruled they can wear trouser suits and slacks in the classrooms. Good follow-up. What does Lancashire think? Women's page crap. Good talking point. Ask the kids as well. Mix schools, big lads, you know, what do you want Miss to wear? Earth shattering. Picture strip. Kids' faces, couple of sentences each. Could be a good page lead if you had the right kids. You're welcome. Here's Tweedledum and Tweedledee. All stations go now. How? A golden wedding is just about my range today. These plastic piles. Corrections? I'll resign first. I trust Jim's note. The old fool wants to watch his mouth. There's the inquest on that triple fatality this afternoon, the family. We'd better double up on that. Uh, we might be able to get something in the phone. How's Alan Shorthand? You can't send one of the girls. The tears, nastiness, bound to be. That Blackie was drunk, so the Bob is saying. Tricky. Good morning. Did you get your end away last night again? He's taking his Duke of Edinburgh's award in stuff. Hey? What's what you're doing? Going blind with it, aren't you? Lucky little son. The new bloke's coming in today, isn't he? Did you see him last week when he came in for the interview? It's obvious he's not been serving any notice. He's getting on a bit too. Real old school. What, old school time? <laughs> no, matey. The other kind, if ever I saw it. He's a Londoner, too. What's he coming up here for, then? Last refuge, I'd say. I saw him. Right wrecky looped. I don't think the desk are too happy about it. Something about a little string being pulled by an old friend somewhere in the group, so I understand. Who pulled what to get you in here, Des? All right. I went over the ball. I'm sorry. Anyone got anything to offer? Conference calls? Yes, Desmond. Martin Deakin, please. Admitted about 8.15. Right, thank you. And the other one I want to ask about is Ahmed Kafik. I think that's right. Uh, K-A... Double F. No, F. For Freddy. I.K. Yes, road accident last night. Thank you. Very poor. OK, thanks a lot. Goodbye. I'll introduce you. He's a bit tied up. No, no, I think the best thing is for one of our young men to give you a quick look round the town, see where the cop shop is, tell you who's who and so on. Then you can have lunch and be back here at about uh, two o'clock. All right? Yes, uh, fine. Now ah, then, uh, who? Uh... Ah, uh, Alan, what's that you've got? Just two road accidents. One needs watching, though. Serious head injuries. Uh, that's all right. Uh, this is Mr. Thatcher, who joined the ship today. Uh, this young genius is uh, Alan Beavis. Uh, all right, Alan. I want you to take Mr. Thatcher on a little tour of the town. Uh, I'm assuming that you don't know the place. 
show him where we hang the sheep stealers and where the free Kashmir I command hangs out and so forth. Then uh, have some lunch and be back here about two o'clock. All right, Mr. Thatcher? Oh, uh, have you managed to sort yourself out some accommodation? I fixed it on the telephone last week. Uh, Byron Street. Do you know it? No. Do you want a street map? Oh, no, no, no. Why, well, do you have to work? I've stumped it somewhere. I'll put it by me there. No, uh, Midlands, near Leicester. <coughs> no, I don't, boy. I think I can recognize a town hall when I see one. How's the town going? Uh, did you drink beer? Well, I could do the stiffener. Don't you want to go to the central police station? Perhaps you could just point to a boy. I had an early start this morning. Yeah, OK. You want some lunch? Yes, well, sandwiches, you know. Might be as well to avoid the office pub. Well, we haven't got one, really. Not one that everybody uses. Cross Keys is all right. They've got food, if you, if you don't mind a jukebox. Oh, yes, I, I think I can stand that, old boy. Do I uh, look like Methuselah? <laughs> Many hard years in the service of ungrateful employers. 25 years hard. Uh, not counting the military nonsense. They ought to give us campaign medals. For a thousand inquests, 500 house fires, 100 talking budgies, and the divorce court star, Anbar, for valor in the trenches of adultery. <laughs> you signed on for life? I think so. My father says it's better than work. <laughs> what does he do? Drives a post office van. You're one of the new army of graduates come to bring a better class of mind to the business. I didn't go to university. I left school earlier, but you need A-levels now if you're going to do any good. Even a lot of the weeklies won't look at you without them. I just wanted to make sure I could get in. Start here. No, on the weekly at home. <laughs> I gave me notice in the day I knew I'd passed the proficiency test. I'd already had an interview here. They don't like you doing that, really, but I wasn't going to hang around. Ah, this place always had a reputation for being a stepping stone. What age are you? 23 last month. It's going all right? Sorry, it's me. Do you want another one? I wouldn't say no. Could we have a pint and a half a bitter, please? No, two pints. Yeah, it's not so bad. I think the paper's a bit dull, though. You know, flat. Everything's got to be done dead straight. News editor tells me I overwrite all the time. Keep it tight, laddie, says. More quotes, less flam. I reckon we should try to put something extra into a story. What, like, uh, Balding bespectacled hearing aid wearing father of six Fred Flug hit out today at the council housing bosses and there are no pets in homes in the skies policies. That sort of thing. Christ, no, I'm a bit better than that. Absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish, Miss Wilkinson.
Moment, Masekis. Have you ever tried thumb screws? Hey, Jamie's back. I am. I'll be in a minute. Too much beer at lunchtime. It was noticed. All right. Sure. It's the last one, though. I weren't pissed. Oh, don't mind me. Nobody thought I was, did they? No, I wasn't saying that. It was just noticed, that's all. In and out of the bog all afternoon. You didn't get a job, did you? I was on weekend duty when I. Ted Saunders always gives you an easy day the Monday after. OK. I'm going to have a bath. Jane's getting some supper. Good. You'll explode with passion, you. Shall when it's ready. You just can't help stirring it these days, can you? I meant it for his own good. Mrs. Radcliffe, uh, my name is Thatcher. I telephoned last week. Do you remember? Yes, Mr. Thatcher. In you come. Thank you. I, um, I was expecting you a bit earlier, but that's no matter. Yes, they worked me late. It's my first day. Like the pound of flesh, do they? Electric house, Mr. Thatcher. I occupy all the downstairs. There are two other tenants, and you share the bathroom on this floor. I'll drop your keys outside your door later on. Now, I do your bed linen, towels, and tea towels, but you'll have to make your own arrangements about your personal laundry. If you like, you can just give me a parcel each week for the van man. Thursday's his day. Not the most convenient day, I know, but there it is. I like to clean each flat twice a week. Mondays and Thursdays are your days. Mornings and afternoons and alternate weeks. Oh, the TV's on rental, so sing out if it goes wonky. You look very tired. You all right? Yes, thanks, sir. You're right, I am tired. Now, you'll be paying monthly, won't you? I, I got the cheque in the post. From your brother? Yes. Yes, a little brotherly transaction. But you'll be dealing with me directly from next oh, month. Oh, yes. That's yes, right? yes, of course. It was just a little brotherly transaction. Right. Well, just as long as I know. Good night, Mr. Thatcher. Good night. Oh, uh, what's the time? Five past ten. Does all his shorthand with a fountain pen. 
<laughs> yes, old Arnold Jones, if he got any ink. You the uh, you the quartermaster, old boy. <laughs> Does he say that, old boy? Yeah, he frightened Arnold to get him dead right straight away. The storm and Saunders enjoyed that little moment. Out of ink, are we, Arnold? That'll never do. He sent one of the kids out to buy a bottle. I've never seen anybody take notes with a fountain pen. Reckons it can do 200 words a minute. Des can't wait to tell Jim Whittle. Which one's that? The municipal man. He's supposed to be the shorthand king. You seem very impressed. What's he look like, this new man? Ugh. It's something out of death row San Quentin. <laughs> His chest sounds like a pigeon loft. <laughs> Court reporter silicosis, he calls it. All that wig fluff, old boy. Six years in the law courts. Special reporting service. You know, Chancery Division, Old Bailey. He's been around. Doesn't seem to have much to show for it. He's back at square one, isn't he? You sound like Des. Well, it's true, though, isn't it? I should hope you're not going to be crawling back to the bottom of the ladder when you're his age. Don't worry. He ain't crawling. I bet he's never crawled. I don't reckon he's ever given a sod for anybody. And you like that, do you? Oh, I'd rather have that than poor, terrified old Arnold sitting it out all his life. Like a frayed old Arthrug about the place he is. You've been at the kitty cat again. We'll be calling you Tibby. You'll never make a door, Matt. You've got it all worked out, haven't you? Which one of the nationals is going to be favoured? You can't pick and choose. Not all the boys want to, do they? I mean, it's not bad pay here, is it? You'll soon be on 40 a week. That report I met with you the other week, the nice one, Stan, he says you ought to be writing features all the time. Stan settled. Home life. Nice little caravan. Off to Morecambe every other weekend. And what's wrong with that? Reporters can have homes and families, can't they? Yeah. But you don't want them chained around your ankles, do you? <laughs> I don't see how you can have a family and not have a family. I think it's a question of when and where. Let the head rule the heart, you mean? You and your Weetabix book of a thousand useful phrases. Meow again. You'll be getting your claws clipped, sweetie. I mean, Tibby. Is Mary going to get married? Yeah, we know why, don't we? I suppose you blame her. I don't care, to be honest. They both know how to go about it. They've just let it happen. You can be a bit cold, can't you? Stay the night. No. No, not when Des is here, not again. Look, forget about him. He knows anyway. Why should you care? It's just him being here in the morning. Well, ignore him then. You can if you want to. I can't. It wouldn't matter who it was. When's his duty weekend? He's working Saturday. I'm running. It's the relay, four time, three mile. I've been preparing for it. I'm in a team. You might have to go in on Sunday as well. It depends if there's a job. My depends. Will you send your bloody mammy and daddy away then? We use that woman's realm show house you live in. Shea bloody Tupperware. Not even if you did, I suppose you'd gone about the neighbours, or the milkman, or the kid from the news agents, or some other fictitious bloody peeping Tom. No. Everything's got to be just right with you, ain't it? Serviettes. Tea in the caddy, Dettle in the bog, bed in bed, don't let anyone see. Why don't you just let go? I'm older than you. Two year. Three then. What does that matter? I never think about it. No, I know you don't. I'll phone you at school tomorrow, lunchtime, or if I can't make it then just after I pass three. See what we can sort out. God. 
you being stupid about him? Christ, it's his flat. He was here first. Stand back. He's gonna run you and Mary home. Of course, he couldn't manage to drag himself up the stairs, could he? How many will there be then? What sort of age group? Oh, there's one there. What, on their parents' backs, you mean? Oh, yes, uh, I know, boy, yeah. Rucksack sort of things. Like older masters. Yeah, quite right, old boy. Like a lifetime ago. Didn't need to tell me. Well, thanks very much. Thanks for giving me his ring. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Yes, but uh, good pictures, I think, with the kiddies. Yes. Yes. Right. Thanks. Cheerio. Footpaths Preservation Society. It's up one of our pet causes. One of the paper's good works, is it? No. National savings you've got to watch, and road safety. The editor's going to get an MBE out of one of them if it kills him. I got a good Lover's Lane story out of those footpaths people once. All the nationals followed it. I don't think they want this one. Rambler's Path. The Guardian might. <laughs> they do love their healthy outdoor stuff, don't they? I sent them a country diary once when I was feeling skittish. Bermondsey, Sunday. It is not only the picturesque rurality of England that can offer us the continuity of folk custom to link us with our past. The Derbyshire village may have its worlds, the Gloucestershire hamlet its cheese rolling. But here, yeah, in the vastness of the metropolis, we have our own peculiar occurrences. Today, as on every Sabbath, the hostelries disgorge their revellers into the afternoon gloom and see how they glitter upon it as they leap into the ancient ritual of kick the groin, also known as foot the knacker. And it is agreeable to observe with what readiness the newcomers of black and brown join with the old order of white in this uh, pavement uh, ceremony. Uh, changeless, yet uh, so quick of trick. <laughs> I didn't get a reply. Did you really send them that? Certainly. I'd asked them for a holiday relief job, being uh, unengaged at the time. While I was waiting, I thought I'd help things on a bit with a uh, little fine writing. Drunk again, of course. Too frivolous, you see. Newspapers don't like you to laugh at them. It was ever thus. Now, these uh, angry preservationists. They want to call it a walk-in. I suppose that's all right. They haven't got anything planned for this weekend, have they? Yes. Well, you have a black. It's your Sunday on, isn't it? A Sunday afternoon with a load of middle-aged yobs on some freezing hillside is just what I want. The turn of the wheel, old boy. What an old mate of mine used to call the VFF. The buggery of the fate. Stan, I haven't seen you in a week or so. Well, what do you expect the price to charge you, beer? How you keep it? Not grumbling. No use, is it? You met Vic Thatcher, have you? He's just joined us. We haven't been introduced. No, but you're a regular already, sir. Well, I'm glad somebody's got him back in licensed premises. I thought they'd all gone TT or bent or something around your place. What are you having? The usual. The school broke up. Too uh, well behaved, isn't it? Since Bill Lawrence left. That's your predecessor. Come back to Birmingham, PR men with the car people. They get all that free now, I suppose. Family all right, Stan? All right. How many you got then? Three, all as wild as Arabs. Are you married, Vic? No. Never? No. Good idea. 
Should we get lost on the way somehow, though? Too busy working and drinking. Drinking and working. <laughs> I've had me moments, of course. How long have you been on the paper? Well, I started on it. It'll do me, I think. Tweedledum and Tweedledee can't last forever. Dead men's shoes, eh? Oh, it doesn't always happen, old boy. I'll take a chance on you. I know the town inside out. Oh, you needn't worry about me. <laughs> I had a desk job once. Shambles. About as much organisation as the Killarney Broyles Brigade. Two or three reporters turning up in the same job. Then no one in the office at all. I had to dash out and do a fire once, so I stuck the copy boy on the desk. <laughs> the editor phoned in. He'd been uh, talking to the chairman of the Rotary and he wanted to give me some daft bloody non-story or another. Who's that? He kept shouting when the kid answered the phone and the kid shouts back, It's only me! <laughs> oh, Christ, what a riot. Hello. Hello, old boy. Get it finished? Yeah. You want one of these? Oh, yes, please. How did it go, all right? I think so. It's probably a bit long. Huh? What, your piece on the little beast with the walking sticks? Call themselves the Toffs. Rough mob. So only should have sent two, are you? Oh, no. Quite right. Who wants a joint byline? Reminds me of Nigeria. Yes, mate. Old colonial white scribe must uh, share story with little black wonder boy. How long are you out there? Nigeria. Oh, it was a mistake, really. Career-wise. <laughs> Four years of it, old boy. Seemed a lot of fun at the time. Can't remember much about it now. Couldn't when I came back. Just a blur of bottle tops and black tits. <laughs> Had your moments, have you, Vic? Uh, always thought that was an overrated pastime, really. You like the tits, sir? Noble. A pillow for a king. <laughs> Never had a good night's sleep if you haven't experienced that. <laughs> How old were you then? I was 31 when I came back. Had to steady up a bit. A little period of penitence and reform. Start uh, making myself respectable, take the business seriously. And I was on the crom when I was 33. Oh, I know that's a little bit late by modern standards, but the youth cult hadn't quite taken over then. <laughs> and the dear old crom was supposed to be the mature mind among the pop nationals, the paper with uh, substance, thoughtfulness, integrity. <laughs> yes, well, the proprietors decided that all that needed balancing to make a prettier package, something that would sell better. Fewer verbs, more birds, less thought, more pap, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Result, disaster. Collapse of silly old party. Oh, my goodness, dearie me, what's to be done? Well, what was done was that the proprietors did themselves a little deal, sold themselves up and us out. Yes, we were told about it overnight. Don't stand there stuttering. Plenty of jobs for you somewhere. That's how I came to achieve executive status on the meanest evening paper in England. He was a news editor. For one, uh, a ridiculous, hilarious, alcoholic, crippling year. Reporters had to sign for their notebooks. Oh, right. <laughs> it's true, in a ledger. Saturday afternoons, they had to sit round taking copy. Headphones, old boy. Their local soccer scores and scorers. <laughs> I soon sabotaged that. I sent half the buggers home and made the results up. God. <laughs> Solemn, why not? Oh, you saw reporters work. Uh, St. Peter and Paul, seven, St. Cuthbert's, 27. <laughs> Even then, they didn't catch on. Terribly bad lines on a Saturday, I used to tell the editor when the complaints came in. Very difficult to hear what these muddy doofs are saying on the telephone. Of course, it was the chief sabu sneak. Journalistic sidesman. That really was the end. Was that when you went into the law courts? Yes, well... After a little involuntary holiday. <laughs> I suppose all this sounds like prehistoric Britain to you, does it? Stan, outside your experiences, is it? Well, I've always thought we were a bit underprivileged here, but I've never heard of anything like that. Only 15 years ago, oh boy. I suppose you'd still be playing with your crayons then, <laughs> wouldn't you? Just about, yeah. <laughs> hey, we need to drop more. Uh, it's my turn. Oh, I've had enough. I'm not in training. You sure? Oh, have the half, old boy. Come on, get him a half, Alan. Well, just one last one, then. I wish I'd phone the wife. Two and a half pints of bitter, please, Tom. Strict on procedure, is she, Stan? She's got used to having me around. And they say the family's a dying social unit. And it makes a bloody noisy call. <laughs> 
Ah, God bless you, sir. So, uh, how do you come to be up here then, Vic? Questions, questions. Somebody been talking, eh? It was ever thus. Well, I'll tell you. I'm among friends, am I? I finished with the law courts. Bang chop. After six years, I couldn't send another minute of that. I could feel my bones flaking. I threw my superannuation, went one of my little holidays. Went off Pooza Safari. <laughs> I went bottle batteries walkabout. Looked up a few friends here and there until the money ran out and then put myself back in the market. Uh, but I got the taste by then, of course. Touch the old trouble I picked up in British West, you know, the heavy stuff in the little glasses. Not good buona. Somebody go bang in the head. Came over all peculiar on the underground. Little hospitalisation was called for. Uh, nothing much, just uh, uh, pumped uh, full of vitamins and given a few stern lectures. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Mr. T, a man of your abilities. <laughs> well, after that, contrite heart, brave new face to the world. But it's a bit uh, hostile, this young world. Suspicious. That's not surprising, I suppose, the way I look nowadays. The London weeklies don't mind the odd old reporter, you know, a reliable note for all the dirt in the magistrate's court. But it's a bit bleak. Especially if you're a man with a light turn of mind. <laughs> I've been on four weeklies in the last five years. Five lean years, so ooh, swallow the pride, do the big grubble, ask for a little favour. I mean, one or two of the boys that I started with have done rather better, to say the least. <laughs> one of them is an editor in this group, uh, not our boss. So, a request was made and a promise. Very, very, very easy on the heavy stuff. That's the odd night cap. I suppose you could call this the last chance saloon. <laughs> well, I shan't talk to anyone, Vic, and I'm sure Alan won't. Oh, it'll get around, old boy. It's bound to. I can't say I care much. I mean, I'll do the work, I'll deliver. You're a bit religious. In fact, very congregationalists, the Kongs. I shouldn't think there's much they approve of in the modern world, is there? Not much. How do you get on with them? Very polite to each other. Don't go home all that often now. What with work, running and a girlfriend. How's that coming along? Up and down. Can't be bad. I meant it and miss. She's a teacher. Very little kids. Are you fond of her? That's how you talk about dogs, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is something very different. Like I said, it's it and miss. She thinks about marriage all the time. She sort of assumed it, I think. Have you encouraged her? I never asked her. How long have you been uh, going out together? Is that the right word nowadays? It'll do. Making it, you say, when you're boasting. Scoring them. Sounds very athletic. No, about three months. Near a four off and on. Well, maybe she's got a point. Depends what you've got in mind, though, doesn't it? I'm not going to take root here for life. She likes everything neat and tidy. Sweet, neat and tidy. She seems scared of the outside world. You know, three year at a teacher's training college, 50 miles from home, and that's travel dealt with. She reckons London's just somewhere people go for their holidays. Well, uh, it doesn't sound all that keen when you talk about it like that. I want her a lot when she's there. When I see her, I want her. Why? How it's supposed to be, isn't it? Yeah, but when we're apart, I never think about it. Perhaps you would find what you want with a very different type of girl. There's plenty of them about, isn't there? Aren't you the liberated generation? Listen, I feel now I could drop her without bothering. When she's there, it's different, though. 
I like being with her. It's just this feeling that I'm being tied down. Should I just tell her to piss off, do you think? I'm not an expert in this field, old boy. I never wrote an Archie Barge column. You better drop her a line. But it seems you ought to make a decision, doesn't it? A bit intense, eh? A lot going on inside. Talented or just ambitious? You're not quite certain, are you? Very worrying. Something to offer the world or just a selfish bastard? It's not a unique dilemma, but it must be a bit of a struggle for an indoctrinated chapel boy. I left all that pulpit stuff behind years ago. Not supposed to enjoy us now, are you? It'll be with you to your grave, with the wagging finger at the back of the skull. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow in the slave galley. Good night, Vic. Good evening, Mr. Thatcher. Oh, hello. <coughs> oh. oh, I must give up this night air. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Uh, have I broken a house rule? It's just... Um... Well, what do you live on? Do I what, dear? Well, do you ever eat? I mean, in your kitchenette, there's half a pork pie stale, a quarter of tea and a tin of condensed milk. Oh, I see. I don't want to be personal, but would you like a bit of help? Well... I know some men can't bear shopping. My husband wouldn't go into a food shop if it involved anything he couldn't get into his pockets. Would you like me to keep you stocked up? Just the necessities of life, you know, to keep body and soul together. Well, just say the word and I'll settle up with you at the end of the week. I think you ought to get something a bit solid inside you, don't you? You're not offended, are you? Uh, no, no, dear. A very kind thought. Would you like a cup of tea? Uh, yes, I would, thanks. Good. Well, come and sit in here, then. I'll be with you in a minute. Uh, I'd better just... Uh... Oh, use mine. Last door on the end. Save your legs. Thanks. <coughs> it's the chest that's gone. Right, thanks. Sit down. You've had a heavy day, haven't you? Well, it uh, hasn't been all work. Put your own sugar in. Been having a drink or two, have you? One or two. Does it show? Not unpleasantly. My husband was a boozer. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. He was the love. Made me laugh. He wasn't one of your gloomy, doomy kind. I couldn't have stood that. Have you, um, met your fellow tenants? I've caught sight of them. Not much fun. One's a schoolmaster. The other one, the fat one, he's in the town hall. Rates department. Clean and quiet. But not much fun. 
Kids and figures are both very tiring, I suppose. Hmm. My husband never took work seriously. He was a bus conductor, when he bothered. That's the sort of thing he liked doing. And his books. And the pub. This was my parents' house. We had a shop. The artisan's clothing store. That's right. It was called that. I made it your bomb once my father got seen now. It was the tinny boy craze. Drain pipe, pants, string, ties, lads queuing up to spend the money. That's how I met Jim. He came staggering in one Saturday afternoon, absolutely determined to buy himself a long red jacket with black velvet collar and cuffs. And he was nearly 40 then. Drunk as a lord. He came creeping back Monday morning with the coat in two carrier bags end to end. He had it under the stairs in his bus all day. Terrified lest his driver should see it. Of course, I took it back. And that was the start of it. How long have you been a widow? Four years. Oh, I never have another. We came late to that, Jim and me. I miss him. But not that way. No, I sold the shop and I converted this place as soon as my father died. Just something to keep us ticking over. Did your husband help you in here? He did all the painting, papering. His heart went. Fifty-two he was. Do you want some more tea? Uh, no thanks, sir. Now, what are we going to do about you? What do you like? You like cheese, eggs, bacon, soup, easy things like that. But yes, good, uh, fine, uh, not too much of it. Oh, I won't break the bank. Are you a bit short? I was thinking about your brother and the check. Oh, yes. Of course, he couldn't just lend you the cash, could he? Blood relations can be a bit cold sometimes. Are you short? I'm all right, dear. Rita. Victor? You know, if you want a new suit or anything like that, I've, I've still got friends in the trade. Don't go paying shop window prices. I could have you looking like Lord Muck for 15 pounds. Well, let's hang on until payday, shall we? Thanks. Right, well, off you go, then. Get your fighting sleep. Good night, Greta. Good night, Victor. Just one thing. No peeing in the sink up there.
Foot, comma, Ice Follies, Follies, apart, comma, both teams showed remarkable stamina. Full point. And that's the lot. Thank you very much, darling. You're my favourite copy taker. Because you're the prettiest. Yes, of course I mean it. All right, then. Goodbye, darling. You've got it to do, haven't you? I'd have a pint if you asked me, Vic. Hello, old boy. Oh, this is an honour. I didn't expect to see you here tonight. I'm meeting Jane here in Desney's Bird. It's dancing Saturday night. Yes. What have you got in the bag? Weekends <laughs> apart, Pot? <laughs> no, it's been running here. I just got back. Yes, of course. Uh, Tom, a pint here, please. Right, I'll uh, just have a little half in this. Well, you look very chirpy tonight, young man. Have you been drinking? We won today. We smashed it. Well done, sir. Someone else as well. Uh, sorry, what? I got a letter this morning. I got an, I got an interview with the Express. Phoning them tomorrow to fix it. Are you? Yeah, it was that teenage violence piece. I wrote to them some time ago and just got a formal sort of answer. You know, we'll bear you in mind. But they must keep some sort of watch, mustn't they? Well, they don't miss much. It was a good piece. Some good quotes in it. What was that one about the thumb? Uh, they call me King Thumb because I poked a kid's eye out. Powerful stuff. Well, here's your future, Alan. I ain't told anybody else yet. God, I'm glad Des didn't see that envelope. Don't mention it to him when he comes in. He'd have it all round him Monday morning as a real jungle drums man. Get him worse in his old age. Must be a bit of a pain in the neck to live with, isn't he? I don't mind him. He was a bit more cheerful when I first came. Big bird man in the office, you know, lots of different ones. God's gift to women. But he can't do the work, can he? Well, I mean, nothing special. He's a bit frightened. He's no real talent, has he? Still, Mary will look after him. Wedding bells across the meadow, is it? Yeah, any minute now. What's that, Vic? Weekend erotica? No, sir. Not me, sir. This is Mr. C. Dickens. He's the greatest of all reporters. I've been raiding uh, my landlady's library. Oh, I think things are looking up for me in the domestic department, oh boy. Now, this is the sublime Charlie on the divine Siri. Now, ah, uh, uh, repeated Mrs. Gamp. But it was always a safe sentiment in cases of mourning. Ah, dear, when Gamp was summoned to his long home and I see him lying in Guy's hospital with a penny piece on each eye and his wooden leg under his left arm, I thought I should have fainted away, but I bore up. <laughs> oh, what about this? But what I always says to them as has the management of matters, Mrs. Harris, now here she kept her eye on Mr. Pecksniff, be they gents or be they ladies, is... Don't ask me whether I won't take none or whether I will, but leave the bottle on the chimney piece and let me put my lips to it when I am so disposed. You know, you could be quick as light with character study. No. Uh, of course, if they uh, ever mention him in the Express, they uh, put a blob against his name. And down at the foot of the story, you have a note saying, Mr. C. Dickens, uh, one of the best-known novelists of the 19th century, mustn't leave the readers asking questions. Uh, well, I mean, that's how it used to be anyway. Don't you like the paper? Oh, newspapers act on you like people. But sometimes you want to hug them. Sometimes you want to kick them around the town. The Express is a great big bullying sort of person. You know, the Mr. Bumble of the business. Dependent of the strong against the weak. Well, I want to work for it. Certainly, why not? Grab all the experience you can and grab it quick. They do say that being a journalist and never having worked for it is rather like playing the piano in the brothel. Do you know that out of all them in the office, I'm the only one set on getting on a national? I don't understand that. Really? I mean, what else is it all about? Des keeps on about local radio. Christ. 
Same old parish magazine with music. I don't want local anything. It's just playing at it, I think. I mean, if it's not national interest, why should anybody bother? A good job. My father's always going on about that. You got yourself a good job, he says for yourself. And we're doing all this guff about new bank managers, retiring station masters, school kids going abroad for their holidays. What does all that matter? And look at all the advertising stuff we have to do. New shoe shops, boring, bloody rubbish about milk bottling machinery. It's PR, isn't it? That's not what I want to do. You ever done any real foot in the door? Agony of the girl who married her brother. Bachelor vicar and pantomime dame Rao. This mother sold her baby. Lady Anne and the Chinese houseboy. How does all that stuff appeal? It's better than counting milk bottles. At least it's about people. Anyway, there ain't much of that stuff anymore. The press council don't like it, do they? Oh, it's not as much as there was. Pops still love their little snicker, though. You'll get your share. They like a wholesome young face on the doorstep. Works wonders sometimes. I'm not there yet, am I? You will be. You're a natural. How are you with that rough stuff? Can't see you doing it. A few squalid little tribes. Rather like being clever at it. Or being told I was. It's nice to be praised, isn't it? I think I can just about remember when. <laughs> Here's the gang. You watch, Desa want to know where me tie is. In an earlier generation, he'd have been known as a masher. Uh, Jane, Mary, Vic Thatcher. Hello. Hello. You look rather splendid, Des. Uh, what are you drinking? Draft lager? Mm. Yes, please. Pint, Des? Yeah. Hey, what's this? You know what they like down there on Saturdays? I did a story about it. Why didn't you get changed? Don't worry about it, man. I'll just say press. I'll say I'm with you. He's pleased with himself. It's one of his up moods. Present mirth? That's present laughter. What's to come is still unsure. In delay lies no plenty. Then come kiss me, sweet and twenty. Youth sister will not endure. <laughs> Get that from memory. <laughs> we won today. We smashed them. Oh, it's great. Boy, you're going to ask that grossy old wreck to join us down here. He was wearing a tie, this, wasn't he? I can't take five minutes of him. He needs a demolition order. The bloody good journalist. It's finished. How do you know how good he ever was? Just because he told you. Bloody soup. He looks as if he's come out of the Salvation Army Doss House. Stands right about you. One of nature's snurts. When did he say that? Most morning. Old oh boy. What's it mean, anyway? Something with the right sound to it. You're going to have a rough ride when Stan's news editor. Nah, he won't make it. Anyway, why should I still be in the new room? Local radio. Disco Des with the weekly fish prices. Or will you do the bricklayer's poetry half hour? Well, well, hey! You want a promise? It's your round, Snurdy. I wouldn't say no, Snurdy, old boy. The fella's drunk. I know he is. Been keeping bad company. <laughs> he still is. <laughs> I'm sorry I spoke.
lover here wants to know if I'm on. And then. Come on, let's dance. Hey? Why did you do that? Why don't we go on now? You're drunk. No, I'm not. Only a bit. I've had more. But we could go now. Get a taxi. But why not a dance? They'll keep away. She'll keep him here. You know she will. Why not? You know why. You are drunk. What have you and Dave been arguing about? Oh, Christ, never mind about all that. So it's got to be tomorrow, has it? You'll find some excuse. You better not. He owes around. Oh, just on the shoe. It's 31 and a half inches, right? Yes, dear. And you sink the grey one with the stripe, do you? I'll find you a nice faint one. That brown's no good for you. Tones you down too much. It probably suited the mode of the moment. A very sombre place, the Chancery Division. Sit down. I want you to feel comfortable in here. I'm glad you're a Dickens fan. Jim had old lumps of it off Pat. Mr. Jingle was his favourite. Mr. Jingle. <laughs> he could rattle it all off better than a pantomime. Mr. Jingle knew that young men to spinster ladies were as lighted gas to gunpowder, and he determined to assay the effect of an explosion. <laughs> right? Smack on by the sound of it. I won't hurry about the suit then. About a fortnight, all right? Fine. You're not working tomorrow, are you? No. Well, why don't you come and have lunch with me then? Well, that would be very nice, sir. Uh... Oh, I know the form. Half past two. Nobody wants to cramp your drinking arm. You're on. Good. You might find that I would want to make a habit of it. That's fine by me, Victor. I like a man at the table. Just enjoy your food. Nothing else is expected. Or watch it. Yeah. That's the way they're going right out there. Oh, shit. We'll get a new pair of boots out of this. I bet I bloody will. Mr. Bus. <laughs> you all right? Oh, 
I'm putting in for half a bottle of brandy out of this lot. Well, it's worth a try. Got some news for you. Well, you're the reporter. Going to Manchester in the morning to see the news editor of the Express. About a job? Yeah. Got a letter yesterday. Must have a good chance. They don't interview many nowadays. Was that why you were celebrating last night? It wasn't just the cross country. Yeah. Why didn't you say? Des. Did you tell Mr Thatcher? Yeah. That's different, isn't it? You could have told me quietly. I wasn't in a quiet sort of mood now, was I? You know I wouldn't have said anything to Des. I know. I've told you now, though. You gonna have your bath? It's spotless. Mary was round doing a trainee housewife stuff this morning, like a visit from the public health department. She can't cook, though. Bloody lousy. Scout? <laughs> no. Just had a mother who believes in certain Sunday rituals. Can't break the habit. Do you want to sort it out? Some of the blokes in these colour sets are get some great jobs. Little wars going on all over the world. Things you never read a line about most of the time. Do you want to go abroad? I mean to work. Yeah, if somebody would send me. I wouldn't go just bumming around though like some of the students do. It seems childish to me. I'll go anywhere for a paper. It's getting a chance though. Do they send people abroad from Manchester? I don't think so. Football blokes, yes, but not newsmen. That's London. So Manchester's just the start for you, is it? Take whatever chances I can get. It's tomorrow's interview, yeah. What if they turn you down? You're confident, aren't you? I don't feel nervous about it. I expect it will in the morning. You never show it. Well, it's no use gulping and stuttering in front of people now, is it? I have to ask people questions. <sighs> Answer a few tomorrow. But do you ever get nervous? Well. Scared a bit inside. You hide feelings, don't you? You can switch off. Just sort of freeze when you want to. And it's not just being a reporter. I mean, Des is an open book and so Stan. But you can sort of wrap your feelings up and put them away when you don't want people to see, can't you? I can never do that. I mean, last night, how could you keep the news of this interview to yourself? Or not tell me at any rate? You never gave a hint you were keeping something back. If you'd come back here, I'd have told you. You might. Look, what does all this matter? I don't understand what's bothering you. You're the only one I have told, apart from Vic Thatcher. He just happened to be there, in the pub, on his own. No desert, there's his bird listening in. But you just switched off from me last night, didn't you? You... Well, dropped me as good as while it suited you. I never left you all night. You didn't need to. And it wasn't just the drinks. You do it a lot. You... You just decided. Let's assume you're right. 
that I do switch off from you. Why is that surprising? I can't think about you all the time. I've got a job, a career, I hope, and I've got friends. You think about me all the time when you're teaching. No. But it's different with you. you... <laughs> There's a word. Disregard? I think I disregard you. It means to set aside from consideration. Ignore. Discount. When you want to. Which means any time, doesn't it? I haven't ignored you today. Look, what do you want me to say? That I'll stop being myself and start thinking about you all the time. That wouldn't mean anything. To a certain extent, you're right. I don't think about you much when we're not together. But when we are, I'm glad we are. I want you then, and I don't want us to part. Isn't that enough? We're very different, aren't we? Are you thinking that we should go our own ways now? Look, I want to keep on seeing you. But if you want me to stay away, I will. Oh, it should be easy for you. You'll have a new job soon, won't you? It isn't far. It needn't make that much difference if you don't want it to. We can still have the weekends. You know you'll get the job, don't you? There's plenty of girls in Manchester. I haven't been thinking about that. No, I know. Look, I'm interested in you now. Can't see anything more to say. But if you want to say no... <laughs> shan't break your door down. Take it or leave it. That's how you want to put it in, yes, but that's how I see it at the moment. You always will, no matter who it is. Shall I phone you Tuesday lunchtime? Phone earlier if you want. For some. Hello, Mary. Much in it, Des? A bit thin. A lot of old creeps throwing snowballs. How's life with you? Like Mary says, it's very cosy. <laughs> Thank you. Now, this is an occasion of some pleasure and some regret. We say goodbye and good luck to Alan here, who is leaving us this evening. And on Monday morning, no doubt, will amaze the readers of a certain national newspaper with some of that punchy prose uh, that he's been dishing out to us over the past 18 months. Yeah. Yeah. We're sorry to lose him, of course, but those of us with an arm full of good conduct and long service stripes feel proud that we are once again providing the national press with a young man who knows his job and has learnt most of it here. Now, our little academy can boast a long line of graduates to what must be described as higher places. But uh, it has been said that they're just uh, taller buildings. <laughs> Anyhow, Alan is on his way, and we wish him every success. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good luck, Alan, and we'll look out for your byline. Right, and again, Alan. Once a more we feel it. Oh, your beautiful son. Hey, that's oh. what the framing that is. Beautiful. Right, let's have one of you all round, Alan. Stan, Dad, all of you, get in round him. You get the ball in picture of the year award for this team. Hey, right, Tom. Go on, Tom, how's the kitty going? Come it's on, get alive. On there. Get your well, ugly mug in here then. Yeah. Hold it right, man. Never want to refill. I told the wife she could send the ambulance at closing time. <laughs> Make sure it's not the earth. <laughs> the boy's got it, hasn't he? The lack, the flair, the bit you can't teach. Yes, he probably thinks he invented it. Well, he did in a sense. 
He had to discover it was there to be used or not. My first editor used to throw books, uh, Whitakers usually. It was a sort of training in a way. And, you know, it taught you to keep your eyes open for the unexpected. Did you ever throw back? <laughs> well, they'd probably put the troops in. You are lucky, mate. It's no, no correction. Fortunate. Not the same thing. Because you've got the talent. You're not a flat mate, you're bloody good. You make Fleet Street. Hmm. That is, if it's still there in a few years' time, the way things are going on, you'll end up showing the tourists around the museum pieces. Yeah, it's going to end up like the old Hollywood cowboy sets, so if you're not careful. Ghost town, right, Arnold? Well, I don't know about that. You're overstating it, Stan. They'll survive. I hope so, for your sake. Because there's not much else you care about, is there? I bet you never run another cross-country race. Come on. I bet you. Hey, how's that little bird of yours, Jane? Nice. She'll be in soon. Reserved sort of lad, isn't he? She's DK. Hey, what? That girl of his. Different class. There he was. This idiot all set for a job in the garden. The paper for the lively minds. He'd pass the news editor, and all he had to do was pass the editor's inspection. You know, uh, just uh, don't pick your nose and look at that. And just in passing, the editor said to him, What are you reading just now, Mr. Walker? And quick as a flash, the idiot said, Dennis Wheatley. <laughs> <laughs> Told me about it afterwards. Well, what's wrong with Dennis Wheatley, he said. <laughs> Told me he should have said Hank Jansen. I mean, they might have thought that was a Danish sexologist. <laughs> don't suppose the Express asked what was on your bookshelf? They seem quite civilised, actually, Vic. No blood stains around the office, as far as I could see. Well, you watch your back, or there'll be plenty of yours. Now, there's another bit of good advice for you, Alan. You'll need a box to take it all home with. Well, I must be leaving now, so uh, once again, all the best. Goodbye, lad. Goodbye, Ted. Thanks for everything. Are you ready, Arnold? Hey, uh, yes, right, oh. Well, good luck, Alan. Thanks, Arnold. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Darrell. Good night. Little Arnie. Ted's driver. He knows his limitations. There's his function in the world. That might not be a bad thing. Perhaps not. Let's not ambition mock their useful toil, though, boy. Now we're back to Dennis Wheatley. You gonna stay here, Vic? Use a question of digging in, old boy. It's a fair paper. Ted doesn't overtax me. I don't think he quite trusts me yet, which is understandable. I expect I'll be the same in his shoes. But I could help him a lot more if he let me. You've helped me. Right. When did I do that? Just odd things. Attitudes, really. I am people like Ted, they're efficient, but they want you all to be so cautious. <laughs> Nobody ever caught me that. <laughs> no, you're right. I'm not sure Ted Saunders hasn't got the right of it, though. I could hardly claim to be a conspicuous success, could I? Perhaps you were short of luck. A dangerous ground, old boy. No, there's something lacking somewhere. I mean, I, what do you call it? Application? Responsibility? Something not quite enough at the centre of it all. But you're not hamstrung, like most people seem to be. I mean, you've picked up a lot since that first day we had in here. Anything might happen to you still. You've never settled for anything, have you? Does it look like that? You're cheering me up no end. It's just I don't call people like Ted and Arnold successful. What's your phrase for it? Time serving. We're in a very funny game. The bit you're joining is getting funnier all the time. The papers don't know where they are with it. I hope they don't let you down. I can always move on. There's someone who might keep you right about it all.